It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, we have arrived on a Friday. It is the end of yet another week. We made it y'all and we deserve a great Masterpiece Friday and I am here to deliver my friends today we are looking at the first half of OK Computer by Radiohead and y'all I am pumped for this one in fact I have uh, my my LP copy of OK Computer out in the place of honor here I received that like oh gosh four or five months ago and I have not yet listened to it I've looked at it I've marveled at it um, but yeah, I've still only heard the one song from that album, which was Paranoid Android, and I reacted to that one all the way back in episode 362, which was in March of last year. So uh, it's been so long since I heard it, I don't remember many of the specific details about it. So. Uh, yeah, I am eager to get to the entire album. Like I said, I received this, uh, this limited edition uh, vinyl box set that was published in 2017 as the album celebrated its 20th anniversary, and I am dying to just crack it open and get to the rest of the album. Uh, so uh, that's what we're doing today, y'all. Um, <clears throat> Radiohead is Tom York. Uh, who handles the vocals and uh, I think most of the the lyric writing. Johnny Greenwood is on guitars and keyboards. Philip Selway is on drums and percussion. Ed O'Brien is on guitars and some sound effects. And Colin Greenwood is on the bass. This particular album is produced by Nigel Godrich. And all of the songwriting credits are attributed to members of the band. As I read in on this particular album, it is... Uh, there's a lot of information about this album. It's considered one of the greats in the last uh, several decades. Uh, it won a Grammy for Best Alternative Music Album in 1998, and it is included in the Library of Congress's uh, National Recording Registry. While it isn't specifically a concept album, the songs here deal with uh, relative uh, similar concepts throughout. Uh, they deal with uh, what in their mind is out of control consumerism, uh, societal alienation and loneliness, and just general unease about the world <laughs> that we all see and experience every day. So uh, we're gonna be making use of the remastered studio recording of this. I also have a cocktail today since it's Friday. Today I have my 10 year bullet uh, bourbon. This is some great stuff. I've actually visited this distillery in, um, in Kentucky and very much enjoy their beverages. So I've got a little glass with a single ice cube which is how I like to have it. So uh, cheers, my friends. Happy Friday. Mm. Oh, we'll dip into, ooh, tasty. We'll dip into more of that in a little bit, but let's get started. The first song on the album, y'all, is a song called Airbag. And uh, this is one that I believe that Tom wrote about a little bit idle biographically because he had been in a car accident about a decade before uh, this was written. And according to him, he was saved by an airbag. So let's listen to this one, Airbag by Radiohead. Off we go. Interesting opening, they kind of landed on A. I am an 
in an interstellar burst, I am back to save the universe. Well, that's a good thing. Woo. It's May Ray Doe coming down. May Ray Doe, but it lands on a major floor. going back and forth between parallel major and parallel minor here. In a fast German car, I'm amazed that I survived. An airbag saved my life. There you go. such a unique color to his voice too, doesn't he? Some great effects on those guitars. And they just meld into that sonic landscape that you've got. It's like a wall of sound. So nuanced, I love it. It's in tempo, the break. Yeah, there's... They're in A, but they're using almost interchangeably the scale of A major and A minor to build all of these chords. And it's beautiful. And atmospheric, kind of all-encompassing. That's the end of that one. And next we're going to get to Paranoid Android, the one that I have heard. But uh, I first want to say, uh, in a Rolling Stone article, Tom said this about uh, Airbag, the one we just heard. I was really frightened of cars back then, but Airbag was almost the complete opposite of that. If you get into a crash or a potentially disastrous situation and walk away, you feel a thousand times more alive regardless of the circumstances. So so there you go, a new lease on life with Airbag. And on we go to song number two. This is Paranoid Android, and let's get right to it, y'all. Here is Paranoid Android. Off we go. I remember this being just really harmonically expansive, just all over the place. Get the acoustic. That's 
minor. Down to La. I think I remember that. G minor down to E diminished in part of this. Except that's not diminished. G minor down to F. Um, that's an E dominant 7. Cool. against the wall with your opinion, which is of no consequence at all. I think the D is the common tone. Over F, over that E dominant seventh chord, so the D is the, the, the common tone in all of those tones. That's the leading tone. Ambition makes you look pretty ugly, kicking, squealing, Gucci little piggy. section. seven first and it walks chromatically down to five then goes to one I remember into 
that second section with that A and G sharp. was um, <clears throat> as brilliant as I think I remember it being. I really, really enjoy that one. Uh, it's got an interesting structure to it. It's got three distinctly different sounding sections, right? Uh, the middle section, the B section, kind of comes back at the end, but it's very short. So it's maybe like a coda material, but it's like a three-part tune. Works fine. Um, the, uh, the, the Some of the lyrics here uh, were inspired by real events that Tom experienced. Uh, he was at a bar in L.A. and saw a woman get a drink spilled on her accidentally, and she got quite violent in response, and he noticed th like the rage in her eyes, the intensity of her eyes, and that gave him pause, and it, it stuck with him for like, good Lord, what is going on? On here and then in this last section the stuff uh that 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 c section uh rain down come on rain down on me from a great height i think he is calling for justice in general uh moral justice to rain down on society at large uh i think uh he is uh seeing this unnecessary at least in my mind unnecessary trauma that our modern society allows our neighbors to suffer through, <laughs> you know, and just to wash away the assertion of, um, of just absolute entitlement that I think is at the core of the crony and hypocritical capitalism that is perpetuating the, what does he say, the, the panic and the vomit. Right, so I think that's what he is calling for here. I think that was a Mellotron. I have a quote in here that according to Johnny Greenwood, the Mellotron that was used here had been previously used by Tangerine Dream. And he remembered hearing Mellotron on some early Genesis music and liked it quite a bit. He, <laughs> he said, there was a weird fucked up sort of choir. I love the fact that the notes run out after a few seconds. So they grab a, uh, a Mellotron and it just happens to be previously used by Tangerine Dream. How cool is that, right? Let's keep going, y'all. We got more songs to get to. The next one is called Subterranean Homesick Alien. The only thing that reminds me of is just the title reminds me of Bob Dylan's Subterranean Homesick Blues, but I don't. I think that's the end of that uh, comparison. So let's take a look at Subterranean Homesick Alien. Off we go. <laughs> More interesting guitars. That's gorgeous. I think it's just a dominant seventh chord is one. It's unstable a bit, right? That's a photo of me over the top of that. Up above aliens hover, making home movies for the folks back home. Okay. I 
that I recognize as a progression. Flat seven. The Mediterranean descending fourth progression. They're all uptight. So our protagonist is feeling isolated and quite disconnected from those around him. He wants an escape, I think. He wants to go join the aliens. Take a joyride. I wish that they swooped down in a country lane. Yep. Late at night when I'm driving. Take me on board their beautiful ship. Take me on their beautiful ship. Show me the world. Show me the world as I'd love, love to see. see. sounds so beautiful on this album. It sounds amazing. I'd show them the stars and the meaning of life. They'd shut me away. But I'd be all right on that G, it's a G, like, there's a seventh and a ninth in that, and there's like minor four, more of that parallel major and minor, Major five. Sure. Sure. I think that was a minor five chord. They're in G. That was a minor five to a tritone, to like flat two, to like a G sharp, and then down to a D major chord, and then it ends. They've left a couple of songs sort of unfinished and ready for the next one to pop in. Uh, really cool. On to the next tune. My friends, and this one is called Exit Music for a Film. This one was written to be included in the movie Romeo and Juliet back in the late 90s, starring uh, Claire Danes and, and Leonardo DiCaprio. I remember seeing that when it came out. Uh, apparently, the band was shown some of the, the final scenes of the movie or and some other uh, short scenes from the movie and uh, so that they could get an idea of the feel of it and, and write a song for the movie. And they were moved to write this particular song, the one that we're gonna hear. Because they ended up including it on this album, on OK Computer, the song was not included on the movie's soundtrack, but it does play in the movie uh, during the closing credits. So let's take a look at what exit music for a film sounds like. Off we go. So if the last one was in G, this is in B minor. Please, you really haven't been yet, musically. Simple acoustic. Wake from your sleep. Boy, the the acoustics are the amazing. Your tears today We escape We escape 
suspended one than a major one. Pack Back to minor one. And get dressed before your father That's cool. Major four chord, then down to A. Those are voices. That's a Mellotron choir setting, I'm pretty sure. And then it ends major. And his voice is so vulnerable at that. What a song that was. Um, makes me want to go back and watch the movie. <laughs> it was an interesting adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, as I recall. Um, I think... This is written from their perspective. The we is Romeo and Juliet, I think, themselves. Especially uh, with like this second verse. Pack and get dressed before your father hears us before our hell breaks loose. Uh, breathe, keep breathing, don't lose your nerve. Uh, I can't do this alone. I think it's the two of them who are uh, wanting to uh, escape, right? To For the very first verse, uh, wake from your sleep, the drying of your tears, today we escape, today we escape. And, um, <clears throat> and then I think they're talking to the rest of us. I think they're talking to, like breaking the fourth wall and talking to the person who is uh, receiving the story, whether it's in a play or a movie or just in our heads and we're thinking about it and you can laugh a spineless laugh. We hope your rules and wisdom choke you. Now we are one in everlasting peace. We hope that you choke, you know, that they're like, this isn't a tragedy. We're together. 
<laughs> uh, what an interesting perspective that that is. I'll need to hear that one again. Exit for a film. Exit music for a film, I should say. Woo! I'm going to do two more before we stop for the day, friends. The next song is called Let Down. And Tom explains to us that uh, this, uh, he says, sentimentality is being emotional for the sake of it. We are bombarded with sentiment, uh, people emoting, right? That's, <clears throat> and from what he says, that is the letdown. Feeling every emotion is fake, or rather every emotion being on the same level, whether it's a car advertisement or a pop song, is fake, is what I think he is saying. So let's talk about the letdown, or being let down. This is just uh, having... Uh, expectations and those expectations not being met right in a general sense so let's see what this one sounds like let down from radiohead off we go more intricate guitar work and soundscapes to bottles and when it comes it's so so disappointing let down and hanging around wow are so sophisticated, y'all. Just the, the way that all of these sounds just melt, melt into each other, and the, the common tones between chords, and how they create dissonance, and then they fall back in together. Excited sometimes, I think, for upcoming new experiences. We have um, anxiety about, you know, first-time events, and we can have such expectation, and such expectation of what should happen or what we expect to happen, and when it doesn't, our expectations get let down. Right? We put our expectations maybe too high into something that hasn't happened yet. And we can get depressed because of that, or disconcerted or isolated.
565 in a major key, but it sounds so alive and nuanced, doesn't it? down and hang it around, crushed like a bug in the ground. Hmm. And we end on a lovely little A major chord, I think, at the end. I'm enjoying myself immensely, y'all. I'm going through the first half of the album. The, the entire album has 12 songs, and so I decided to do the first six. And so Karma Police is the sixth song. So this will be the last one for today. And uh, in reading about this one, I read that this is another one of these haunting atmospheric tracks. And uh, when I went even to look at it on... Um, in terms of how many views it has on, on YouTube specifically, this one has a lot more views than Paranoid Android does. So I'm really curious to hear this one because I have not previously. So let's finish things off today with Karma Police from Radiohead. Off we go. Hmm. It's like a two five one. Huh. It's like Doria mode, but sometimes minor and sometimes. Same chords. Sometimes they're in G's and sometimes they're in A. on the leading tone and then a tritone move to the 4-5 before we get back. For a minute there I lost myself. Sinister, isn't it? I mean, he's turning his observation of the world from being inward into being outward, right? So this is what you get. Reacting like this.
Okay, I'm glad I stopped there because now I really want to come back and finish the rest of the album because I don't understand at all what was happening at the end of that thing. That was... Come on now. Woo! Half of it. We got half the album down. I gotta take a drink. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Karma Police. Yeah, the thing that I hear here is instead of always sort of being internalizing his view of the world and his loneliness and his antisocial feelings, he's kind of looking at the all of the um, behavior and the activity that he sees. And he's like, see, you did this, and it's going to come back to haunt you. Trust me, right? You know, this is going to be what you get, right? Um, interesting. Uh, verse 1, karma police arrest this man. He talks in maths. M-A-T-H-S, but he uh, he buzzes like a fridge. He's like a detuned radio. Well, that gives us some idea of, of the, the, the detuning of the radio at the end there. It almost sounds like um, he's having a breakdown or a meltdown and kind of starting to lash out and be accusatory kind of specifically at these ideas. <clears throat> What a fascinating album, right? It sounds unbelievable. It sounds unlike anything else I think I've, I've heard. It's really unique. And uh, in my reading about uh, the album as I was uh, getting ready to record the episode today, y'all, uh, I saw that Tom York's starting point for this album was, uh, the inc at least musically, was the incredibly uh, dense and uh, sometimes terrifying <laughs> Uh, sounds of Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. And this is one that I have now heard. We did a um, an extended play lounge episode uh, on my Patreon to Miles Davis's Bitches Brew back in February. And it was all I could do to keep up with that piece. It was um, avant-garde uh, jazz fusion. It was chaotic. It was uh, genre busting. It was overwhelming. It's also brilliant from what I remember, and York uh, described the album as building up, as a sort of building up of something and watching it all fall apart. <laughs> and and he says that's what we were trying to do with OK Computer. It has been suggested that the band owes some of their style and choices on this album to some of the great prog rock uh, albums of the 70s. And in the Mellotron usage, I get that, but the band has largely played down some of these comparisons. And it seems as though their influences are more so sort of this beautiful intersection of rock and roll and even some programmatic writing like tone poems and movie scores um, and... Uh, some experimental forms of music like the Miles Davis uh, a Bitches Brew example. Uh, some psychedelic rock gets in there. Um, yeah, avant-garde electronic music gets in there as well. It's just a little bit of everything. But they aren't really like moving key areas and writing these big sort of opuses like the Prague uh, giants of the 70s were doing. These are still at their core I think just rock and roll songs, but influenced by all of this avant-garde and electronica and psychedelic and their own um, connection to the world around them. And being in the late 90s, it's a lot different societally than it was in the 70s. Some of the same issues uh, persist, but there are new uh, things about society to, to look at and to react to. Um, the other thing that I think ties together uh, this connection to potentially prog rock is in the lyrical content. And many of the, the, the prog music that I have heard and listened to on the Daily Doug, their lyrics are concerned with the big questions, right? Societal problems, mental health issues, uh, political trends, um, what's happening in the media, what's happening with information and manipulation of that. 
and uh, like the big questions, the what does it all mean in life sorts of things, um, even sci-fi related stuff where we take that metaphor and we push it into sci-fi realms. Uh, though this album is not a concept album per se, uh, OK Computer does have consistent themes that we've heard, right? And the aesthetic of the album is incredibly consistent and it lends itself well to a full listen and not just individual songs. In fact, uh, I think hearing these songs together, like I've just done, um, increases their overall effectiveness and their beauty and, and their reason for being and their connection to each other. I think if I heard these individually, I would like them, but hearing them all together in this sort of continuum was a real treat. And uh, I cannot wait to get to the rest of the album, friends, but uh, I think we're gonna leave that one here for today. So in the coming weeks, I will get back to the final six songs of OK Computer, but for now, I, uh, I am happy to get through the first half of it, and I can't wait to put the vinyl on my turntable and put my good headphones on and bliss out to this, uh, uh, at least this first side for now. So until uh, next time, friends, thanks for being with me, and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. <laughs>